The story begins when our protagonist Aksu Fei is upset about his average looks and abilities, while the girl Chu Jian, who is an academic topper, is praised for her athleticism and kindness. Chou Fei digs at his destiny of working a usual 9 to 5 after graduation. At the same time, Chu Jian, a daughter of the Tita family, would top in everything and handle the family business. But the story gets interesting when Chu Jian approaches Aksu Fei, appreciates his hard work, and brings milk and bread for him. But Xiao Fei, a guy who used to get jealous of her, refuses and labels himself busy. Chu Jian asks to meet him tomorrow, but Xiao Fei tells Chu Jian that he'll be busy tomorrow too, so she'll let him go. Chu Jian is into Xiao Fei, but he doesn't feel like a man for the very talented Chu Jian. Chu Jian asks if it's due to her annoying behavior or the confession early on. Xi Chu is one year older than Xiao Fei, but still loves him and doesn't want to lose him. So she confessed that some time ago, Chou Fei, the youngest of three brothers, was playing on his phone when his brother hurriedly came in and informed him about a surprise outside. Chou Fei was astounded to see Chu Jian lighting up candles to confess her feelings for Xu Fei, asking him to be in a relationship. A vast crowd gathered there and was surprised to see such an old school way of confession. A girl appeared and reminded Chu Jian that she was the most talented student at the university and asked if it would affect her status but Chu Jian didn't care. The girl is shocked to see the most beautiful and talented girl to be rejected by an average ex Su Fei, but Chu Jian only worries that she has put Xiao Fei in danger. Chu Jian didn't realize much of it back then. The girl tells Chu Jian to do what she wants or to go away. With complete confidence, Chu Jian takes a deep breath and confesses to Xiao Fei that she wants to be with him. Both ex Su Fei's elder brothers start to tease Xiao Fei that he's lucky and that they didn't expect his senior sister to like him. But Xiao Fei runs away into the bed nervously and tells his brothers to let him sleep. Xiu Fei's brothers worry that she's out there confessing her love, and their brother hasn't even responded. Xiao Fei is pressured to respond to Chu Jian, but he admits that he's not the right person for her. He suggests that Gao Yang, the tall and handsome student president, is a better match for her. One day, Gao Yang approached Xiu Fei after seeing him with Chu Jian which made him uncomfortable. Still, Gao Yang told Xiao Fei to be calm and told Xiao Fei politely that he was Chu Jian's future husband as their marriage was fixed by their elders long ago, but Chu Jian kept refusing. Gao Yang ironically presses Xiao Fei and asks for his support. Xiao Fei is startling. Gao Yang tells him that Chu Jian is her father Xi's heir, so she needs a supportive man like Gao Yang. Xiao Fei utters that's only possible if Chu Jian agrees to. Gao Yang repeatedly tries to manipulate Xu Fei, saying that love alone cannot handle her millions of dollars and cannot handle her company. He also reminds Xu Fei that if only Chu Jian was an ordinary girl, she could have liked any other guy, but she's not, so only he can be Chu Jian's husband. She will be ruined if she chooses a loser or her husband will murder her. Xu Fei apologizes to Chu Jian for his response, but she knows she confessed suddenly. Chu Jian utters that she will wait until Xu Fei agrees. Chu Jian tells Xu Fei to do some work if he has any. While turning the corridor, Xu Fei unexpectedly collided with Gao Yang and his group, who were waiting for him. Gao Yang angrily shouts at Xu Fei that it seems he has not taken Gao Yang's words quite seriously and gives Xu Fei a massive blow to his face. Xu Fei tries to clear the misunderstanding, but Gao Yang scolds him for being a mischief. Gao Yang repeatedly punches and kicks Xu Fei's back while lying on the ground, wounded and hurt, with blood spurting out of his mouth. Gao Yang shouts that Xu Fei will realize that Chu Jian is not a girl to touch today. As Xu Fei is lying on his back hurt, he suddenly falls into an endless abyss and crashes onto the land. Xu Fei's hurt, but he can't believe he fell from such a height and is alright. His clothes have changed, and the world is different, just as he has traversed to old age. He notices red reishi mushrooms and wonders about the abundance of medicinal items. Xiao Fei ponders if he's in heaven when all he sees are red mushrooms. As Xiao Fei examines a reishi mushroom, a mother and child pass by. The child tells her mother that a man standing there is holding a poisonous mushroom, but her mom ridicules that man as many scholars fail their exams and go crazy. While Xiao Fei was still confirming if these were reishis, the mother of that child shouted that those mushrooms were poisonous. Xiao Fei is surprised to see them in such old-fashioned clothes and wonders if he has traversed. It gutted Xu Fei that if he had this superpower, why hadn't his body changed slightly? 
Meanwhile, a horse approaches Exu Fay. On the horse, a beautiful young red-haired girl is riding, bruised badly with arrows, and the horse has some arrows hit on it too. Xu Fei gets aside worryingly that he's come into this world just to get drilled by a horse. The girl and her horse fell, and Xu Fei took a step closer to the girl and took a deep breath. Xu Fei sees that the girl is injured on her chest, and fortunately, the arrow doesn't seem to be deeply in. Xu Fei pulls it out but worries that the tip was poisoned. As he pulls it from her chest, he sees mysterious light rays coming out of her wound and surrounds the man, which bewilders Xu Fei. The days pass, the sun sets, and the moon is out. Chiu Fei wraps the damaged lady with a piece of cloth. Finally, the girl is conscious. Xu Fei tells the girl to drink warm water. The girl tries to get up, but Xu Fei advises her not to, as she's badly injured. The girl stares at Xu Fei in a hostile manner, which confuses him. He introduces himself and asks for her name. Considering meeting in such a remote place is fortunate. The girl gets up, pulls out her sword quickly, and points it at Xiao Fei. Xiao Fei asks if calling her beauty is teasing, but the girl doesn't like him talking this freely. Xiao Fei shouts that she should be grateful for saving her life, but she's trying to hurt him instead. Despite saving her life, the girl repeatedly threatens Xiao Fei as he tries to make her understand her gratitude towards him. At last, the girl asks if Xiao Fei has bandaged her. The girl realizes that Xiao Fei is her benefactor and wants to return the favor now in any form he wants. Xiao Fei jokes about partnering with her and conquering the kingdom together. The girl becomes furious and is about to rip Xiao Fei's throat out, but he shouts he was joking, and she tells him that she's going to take his head off if he continues joking like that. Xiao Fei tells the girl that he's a foreigner and doesn't know the rules, so where are they? The girl says they're in the Great Yan Kingdom on the North Continent. Xiao Fei hasn't heard of it and thinks he's out of the earth. Xiao Fei tells the girl his name and asks her name in return. The girl's name is Shengnan Huangfu of the Huangfu family. Shengnan is also a Marquis of Zhenbai. Xu Fei surprisingly utters that a woman can be a Marquis too, which infuriates Shengnan that a woman can save his land too. Shengnan tells Xu Fei that her family is in the top three families and can fulfill most of his requirements. Xu Fei wants more of it now and doesn't want to be polite with a girl of such a political background and wonders if he wants a group of wives or a mountain of gold, maybe silver, or a high-ranking official. Meanwhile, Shengnan can't find his breastplate and is worried. She grabs his collar and asks him forcefully about her breastplate. Xu Fei tells her that he must take that off to bandage her. Shengnan is angry that Xu Fei shouldn't have removed her armor. Shengnan starts removing her bandage, and the wound is almost healed already. Xu Fei is astounded to see what kind of body Shengnan has. Now as Shengnan realizes Xu Fei touched her breasts, she starts chasing Xu Fei with a sword in her hand while Xu Fei says that touching her breasts for saving her life wasn't much of a big deal. This makes Shengnan calm and reminds herself that she's been in the army for eight years and how can she murder someone because of this. Xu Fei asks why Shengnan attacked him three times if she's a warrior. Shengnan tells Xu Fei why she shot him every time and the third time, it was because she had a birthmark of a phoenix on her chest like every girl of the Huangfu family and if touched by a man, it disappeared. Xu Fei wonders why that is. Shengnan tells Xu Fei that this mark is on a woman's private part, and if touched by a man, they must marry each other. <sighs> With his eyes that a birthmark will decide their whole life, and advises Shengnan to leave this family rule, and asks if it disappears when touched by a father or brother. Still, it only disappears when touched by a non-blood-related man, but her family isn't that strict about this. Xu Fei is relieved to hear this and knows although Shengna is beautiful, she brings her sword out every second and is tall and too strong. Shengna feels that Xu Fei doesn't intend to marry, but he agrees nervously he doesn't feel worthy of such a beautiful girl. Shengna tells Xu Fei that there's a solution if he doesn't want to marry her. She's a daughter of the Huangfu family and their innocence can't be lost so the Huangfu family would not harm their daughter. So if she murders Xu Fei, her birthmark will come naturally. Hence, there's two options, either to marry or murder. Xu Fei doesn't realize until now that he's shocked that Huang Fu's family only murders the outsiders. Xu Fei demands for the return of favor of saving Xing Nin's life. She says that the kindness she has offered already is by not murdering him. Xu Fei makes up his mind after thinking about it and agrees to marry her. 
Shang then reminds Xu Fei that they're not married yet and that Xu Fei must join the Huangfu family first, which he's surprised a bit, but becoming a superfluous son-in-law would be a disgrace to Xu Fei, and he spits this at Shang Nen's face. Shang Nen gives him a death stare, after which Chu Fei says it's okay and he will join their family. Shang Nen tells Xu Fei that he will be Huangfu Shang Nen's man from now on, and no one will dare to bully him again. Shang Nen is very excited to see such beautiful flowers and is amazed to see them in the palace. Chu Fei sees Shang Nen acting like a traditional girl and sighs relief that she also has a girly side. Eventually, the army of Marcus Shang Nen arrives and greets her. They are all surprised to see Xu Fei by her side. The commander thanks God that Marcus is alive and tells Shang Nen they all were worried after hearing the attack. Shang Nen calms them down by telling them she's fine and it's due to her fiance. Otherwise, she would have been a corpse. The commander couldn't believe her eyes. Hexu Fei introduces himself and is pleased to meet them all, and every soldier thanks him for saving Marcus's life. As they are on their way, the commander introduces herself as Wan Qi, the third commander of Chishing Iron Cavalry. Wan Qi can't comprehend why Marcus chose him. Chu Fei tells the commander that his strength impressed Cheng Nen. Wan Qi mocks Hexu Fei that he can't even ride a horse and talks about his power. Hedu Fei is infuriated and says he can ride, and immediately falls off the horse. Wan Qi still can't believe why Sheng Nen chose a weak man like him. Chu Fei tells Huang Qi to retrieve his status that Sheng Nen attacked him three times, and he survived, which impressed her naturally. Wan Qi shocks Xu Fei by telling him that Sheng Nen is one of the top three martial artists in the world. Xu Fei wonders if Sheng Nen is this much stronger. Wan Qi can't believe that Xu Fei is that strong to survive her Marcus attacks and tries to intimidate him with the sword. She wonders if she underestimated their son-in-law and tells Xu Fei they should learn from each other. As Wan Qi judges Xu Fei's credibility, Sheng Nen herself corroborates that she attacked Xu Fei three times and he survived. Wan Qi apologizes and admires Xu Fei's abilities. Xu Fei wonders why Sheng Nen continued with what he said and if she wants to marry him. The carriage enters the palace where the people wait for the Marcus and her fiance Xu Fei. People started fussing about Xu Fei that he couldn't ride a horse, and the Marcus chose her and humiliated Xu Fei that the Marcus had some kind of marriage contract with the crown prince. Xu Fei feels he should learn to ride a horse, but Shen Nen says he can learn it later and not to worry. Meanwhile, in the East Palace of the Imperial Palace, Prince Zhao Zhen was bursting with everyone asking why they couldn't get any information regarding the fiance of the Marquis as the soldiers told him that the Marquis' fiance was too well protected by guards. Prince Zhao is furious that Xu Fei robbed him of his woman. On the other hand, Sheng Nen shows Xu Fei her home and tells Huang Qi to take Xu Fei for a rest. Xu Fei asks if Sheng Nen's always this busy, so Huang Qi tells him that her people will likely make the attack this time so Sheng Nen will go to the military camp to investigate the matter. Xu Fei can't understand why Sheng Nen's people will attack her. A huge line of servants greets Xu Fei as he's passing through, and he feels it is good to have so many of them. It's night and Xu Fei starts undressing himself to take a hot bath, but the servants look at him with hostile eyes, and Xu Fei feels that it's not good. Suddenly, a girl enters the bath of Xu Fei and starts undressing her yellow bath suit, revealing her body. It makes Xu Fei uncomfortable, and he stops her from doing this, but she says she wants to rub his shoulders. Xu Fei reminds the girl of feudal etiquette, but the girl keeps touching Xu Fei unethically. The girl repeatedly tries to take advantage of Xu Fei as if it were a trap. It was a trap. As Xu Fei realized it, the girl in the bathtub started shouting that the son-in-law tried to touch her and started crying out for help while Xu Fei was shaken to his core and could not understand what was happening. The servants come into the space, scold son-in-law for this mischief, and cuss him for doing this, while Xu Fei is stunned by this cunningness. They threw Xu Fei into a prison. Chu Fei was right, but he still couldn't believe what these people were doing to him, and they set him up. He wonders if he's going to stay here forever. Xu Fei looks out of the sturdy iron window and tries to break it, but it's too firm, and some guards are sitting there. Xu Fei is gutted that if he had known this would happen, he would have never become the superfluous son-in-law. Xu Fei can't do anything now but lie down, sleep, and die peacefully. But as he fell asleep, a light glowed around him. 
A man was cleaning the school's park. Suddenly, a blue bolt of lightning comes out of the sky and strikes the ground just behind the back of the man. The man goes and sees Xu Fi lying unconscious and wonders what kind of kid sleeps here during the day. The man wakes Xu Fei up and tells him not to sleep there. Xu Fei remembers the man and asks if the man has also crossed over, which puzzles the man, after which Xu Fei realizes that he's back in the school. Xu Fei is tense that everything that happened before was a dream. Xu Fei and the man don't know how long Xu Fei's been sleeping here. The man asks about the roots in Xu Fei's pockets, which he ignores and returns home. Xu Fei's brothers ask if he has made progress with his senior sister, as he has not been home for the whole night. Xu Fei is so tired and confused that he says he doesn't know and goes to sleep. The brothers laugh that Xu Fei might have spent the night with his senior sister. The brothers are worried about Xu Fei and let him sleep. Xu Fei asks for food and then lies on the bed. Xu Fei wonders if all the crossover thing was real, and if it is real, then he has survived death multiple times. Ginseng is the proof that crossover is natural. While thinking about all this crossover stuff, the thoughts of the senior sister arise in his mind, and he's confident that if he's survived all the death threats and dangers, he can also face Chu Jian's feelings. Xu Fei calls her, but she's crying and worried that her grandfather is ill, which also makes Xu Fei stressed. Xu Fei is very passionate and asks Chu Jian how her grandpa is. She tells him that her grandpa's health has never been good, and now her grandpa is in ICU. Xu Fei offers to give the company, but Chu Jian knows how sensitive he is and tells him not to come, even though she likes Xu Fei's gentleness a lot. Chu Jian knows that seeing her family will be too much for Xu Fei, which surprises Xu Fei that Chu Jian knows more about him than Xu Fei himself. Xu Fei hears some voices coming from the back of Chu Jian on the phone about some freshly cultivated wild ginseng and that her mom would pay anything for it. Xu Fei knows he has ginseng from yesterday and quickly tells Chu Jian that he has wild cultivated ginseng if she needs it. Chu Jian quickly tells her mom not to find ginseng as her junior brother Xu Fei already has it. Chu Jian's mother reminds her that Xu Fei is from a poor family and he can't have ginseng. She says he's just trying to get close to her by talking about ginseng while Xu Fei is hearing all this. Chu Fei knew her family would react this way, so he avoided them. Chu Jian convinces her mom that Xu Fei is very sensitive, but will never lie, and even if he is attempting to get close to her, then she would agree and even become the mother of his child. If he doesn't, she will force Xu Fei to marry her. Chu Jian's mom insults Xu Fei, but she goes away and tells Xu Fei to get to the college's gate so the driver can pick him up. Chu Fei knows it's his chance to prove his credibility to Chu Jian. As Chu Fei stands, a humongous car comes and asks Xu Fei to get into the vehicle, which surprises him. As they are on their way, the driver tells Xu Fei that Miss Chu Jian mentions him a lot, and he and all the servants have seen Xu Fei's picture. She also wants Xu Fei to visit her home and find her there. Chu Fei feels blessed that Chu Jian did so much for him. The driver leaves Xu Fei at the hospital and Chu Jian calls his name to make him come her way. Chu Jian is pleased, and she expects Xu Fei to be there with ginseng. Chu Jian wants Xu Fei to give her ginseng in front of all the people to make them remember that Xu Fei saved her grandfather's life. Chu Jian makes Xu Fei understand that she never doubted him. Chu Jian's trust and love for Xu Fei overflow his feelings, and he hugs her tight for a long time and kisses her. Chu Jian tells Xu Fei that all she wants is Xu Fei's heart, and nothing else bothers her. Chu Jian is happy, and at the same time, she doesn't expect Xu Fei to be this proactive. Chu Jian knows something has happened earlier, and Xu Fei shows this much love. Xu Fei wonders if Chu Jian knows about the crossover, but as he starts to talk about his day, her mom orders Xu Fei to get away from her daughter. <sighs> to President Wang for verification, who is a veteran of the Chinese medicine world. He can detect anything inferior for sure. Chu Jian's mother tells her that her boyfriend will be exposed, and if she finds out that Xu Fei is fooling them, she will not allow Xu Fei to ever come close to Chu Jian again. President Wang looks deeply at the ginseng and is astonished to see such fresh wild ginseng as he has never seen anything like that. 
Chu Jian's mother can't believe her eyes while Chu Jian hugs So Fei, saying that he saved her grandpa's life. Chu Jian's mother pulls her daughter away from Xu Fei and asks how much money Xu Fei wants for the ginseng. Chu Jian doesn't like this, but her mom shouts that all her boyfriend wants is her beauty and Xia family's money. She points her finger at Xu Fei, ridicules him for being poor and living on the edge, and speaks badly about his character. Now Xu Fei has had enough and tells them all that he wanted to help, which he did. And now he's leaving. He knows he's poor, but has dignity, which he cannot sell. Xu Fei walks away gutted while Chu Jian stops him, but her mother orders her to let him go. Meanwhile, a man appears and tells Chu Jian and her mother that Chairman Xia is awake and happy. On the other hand, Xu Fei is gutted, and walking back, thinking about what happened, he runs into Gao Yang, who bought ginseng from the black market himself. Gao Yang is furious to see Xu Fei alive before him and shouts that he is dead. How's he alive? Xu Fei tells him he's back from the dead and reminds Gao Yang that a hypocrite like him isn't a fair match for Chu Jian, giving him a massive blow to his jaw. Gao Yang still can't believe that Xu Fei, even after falling from the top floor, is still alive. Xu Fei hits his knee right on Gao Yang's face and reminds him not to approach Chu Jian ever again. A noise came from behind, and it was Chu Jian's mother. Chu Jian's mother scolds Xu Fei for daring to beat someone before the Chi hospital. She defames Xu Fei by calling him a violent hypocrite and saying that her daughter is childish and has made a mistake by loving him. Chu Jian's mom comes and Gao Yang, being horribly beaten, tells her that Xu Fei is a ghost and she agrees that Xu Fei is a poor man. She knows that Gao Yang is here to deliver the ginseng and shows it to Xu Fei saying he should not think that he is a hero, that he saved Chu Jian's grandpa's life, and that Gao Yang can still help Chu Jian. Chu Jian's mother gave a check worth 1 million, half for ginseng and half for staying away from Chu Jian. Chu Fei takes it cold-heartedly and goes his way. As Chu Fei takes the check, he knows that Chu Jian's mother will tell her that he loves her for money, and now Chu Jian will hate him for that and will give up on him. Chu Fei accepts the outcome. On his way, he sees a donation box and decides to donate 1 million. The man standing there is astonished to see this and confirms if Chu Fei really wants to donate 1 million and asks for his name as it will be easier for them to advertise. Chu Fei decides to leave an anonymous name no one knows as Wang Fu Shengnan Man. As Chu Fei returns home, his brothers don't think he's Ok and ask if it is due to the ginseng thing as they hear Chu Fei talking on the phone. Chu Fei tells his brothers that Chu Jian's grandpa is right and he and Chu Jian are over. The first brother cannot believe it, while the second brother knows that Xu Fei still has feelings for her. Xu Fei's brothers know he's uncomfortable, so they offer him a drink, and the second brother also brings some snacks. All the brothers drink to get relief from this world's cruel essence. As Chu Fei's drunk, he finds himself back in the other world and takes a deep breath. Xu Fei is back strangled in that prison. Suddenly, there are shouts that Lord Marcus is back. Xu Fei is afraid to his core that Shengnan is going to find out what has happened, and he will die. Xu Fei can't even run as his legs are chained. The door opens and Xu Fei turns his back. It's Shengnan and Xu Fei is terrified, which is visible on his face. He's worried that the housekeepers have told her everything. Xu Fei gets down on his knees and tells her that it was all a misunderstanding. Shengnan brings out her sword while Xu Fei begs not to murder him as he's the wrong culprit and the whole thing is a setup. Shengnan swipes her sword at Xu Fei, and he feels like he will die, but it turns out that she cuts the chains. The old man, Lao Fu, tries to tell the truth about Xu Fei, but Shengnan scolds the old man for his mistake and orders that whatever happens, Xu Fei is still her husband, and no one ever dares punish her husband. Old Lao Fu apologizes on his knees, saying he cares about dignity, so he thinks that the son-in-law's behavior might affect Marka's reputation. Shengnan orders Lao Fu to give Chu Fei the keys to the Marcus's house as he will take care of it from now on. Further, Shengnan tells Xu Fei to get all the details from Old Fu and that Xu Fei is now the family's most prominent member besides Grandpa and Shengnan herself. Shengnan assures Xu Fei of her support in every matter if the royal family intervenes. Xu Fei admires Shengnan's support and calls Marcus by her name first and then calls her Marcus again, which makes her laugh. She says that only Xu Fei can call her by her real name, Shengnan, and then she tells Xu Fei to come with her to her room. 
Shengen starts to take off her armor and her beautiful body can be seen. Cho Fei asks if he should get out. Shengen calms him down as they are husband and wife, so it's okay. Shengen asks about the last night as she roughly knows about it. Cho Fei then asks why she let him out or if she's afraid that he molested the maid, which makes Shengen question him. But Cho Fei assures her that he's still untouched. Shengen assures He Xiu Fei that she trusts him. Cho Fei wants to know why Shengen greatly depends on him without knowing the story. Shengen tells him that she's comfortable with him as they are both of one mind, and if he likes the maid, he can still have her as a concubine, which puzzles He Xiu Fei. Shengen tells He Fei that everybody thinks that she only values her face, but that's not true because her family has stood for a hundred years. So how can a few gossips affect her military merits? And that she doesn't want Su Fei as a superfluous son-in-law, but as an equal supportive husband with one mind. Shengen offers Ex Su Fei as they are one mind, that he can take a concubine, but he refuses, as he knows that a man for life can only live with this beautiful and sensible lady. He doesn't need any concubine as long as he is Shengen's husband. He Fei tells the actual story to Shengen about last night, which infuriates her and she throws her glass away, causing it to break, and assures him that she'll take the matter into her own hands. Su Fei is impressed by this. Meanwhile, a maid informs Shengen of a magical box they have just found. Te Fei doubts it can be the beer he brought, but Shengen doesn't understand it. Chu Fei is puzzled about how he can get things from this world to others. First, it was ginseng and now beer. A silly idea comes to his mind. He can take expensive items from Marcus House, sell them in the real world, become rich and prepare himself for Chu Jian. So Fi orders the old Fu to take him to the inner treasury as he wants to take a good look at the inventory of the Marcus, but all he wants to do is to take some gems from there. Xu Fei knows the Marcus treasury has stood for a hundred years, so it would not be less for him, as he's too greedy. Before entering the treasury, Heju Fei thinks he will take a longan pearl, blood jape wrench, or something minimal, as the latest news was that blood jape wrench was auctioned for tens of millions. Old Fu opens the inventory, but it is empty. He gets mad at Old Fu for constantly emptying the treasury and wants to blame him. Old Fu tells Xu Fei to calm down and listen to him. He says that other Marquises are rich, but our Marquis is thrifty and has invested all her money in the military. That's why the Chishing Iron Cavalry is the elite of the Great Yan Kingdom. Old Fu also tells Xu Fei the hardships and hate the Marquis have been facing alone, which makes Xu Fei realize that Shengen has taken on so much. Xu Fei ordered Old Fu to give him the account books of the mansion and the items of the shops. Teo Fei takes a frustrated sigh and wonders why becoming wealthy in this life is so difficult. After some time, Chou Fei calls Old Fu again, who tells him there's still some finding left. Chou Fei tells him to take his time but tells him something about weeds. They take Su Fei to the outside of the capital, and he's amazed to see 20 ginseng in 50-year-old Ganoderma lucidum, and some blood ginseng too. He's shocked to see a lot of them here. Old Fu and a servant think that Xu Fei might not be okay, or maybe it's his hobby to collect such. Xu Fei contains them in baskets and now orders Old Fu to take them to Xu Fei's room as he can only take things with him if the items are with him. So he must put the weeds with him so he can take them with him the next time he crosses over. Old Fu asks if Xu Fei is sure he wants to put all the weeds in Marcus's bedroom as it would be wrong if she sees it all. Old Fu tells him that since they are married, he can only sleep in her bedroom in the Marquis mansion. Xu Fei tells him they are in a feudal society, so sleeping without marriage is not good. Still, Old Fu doesn't agree and tells him the history of regulations set by noble unions, but Marcus Shengnen doesn't take these secular rules seriously. Xu Fei knows he has been single for a long time and will sleep with a beautiful woman tonight. It's not a lie that he wants it, but it's too sudden. Suddenly, Shengnen, riding on a horse, shoves the back of Xu Fei and wonders if he doesn't want to share the room with her. Xu Fei tells her that he's a man and doesn't want to be abrupt with her, but Shengnen says it's no problem and that if he wants to hug his weeds or keep them beside him, it's okay. It's the night and Xu Fei is sitting with his weeds and feels like being a woman married to Mark is so weak. Mark is wears her pink night suit on her beautiful curvy body. Chu Fei lures himself to see the beautiful body of Shengnen and prepares himself to lose his virginity. Shengnen suddenly approaches him, and Chu Fei backs himself up and requests that they talk first. Chu Fei is caught in two minds, one stopping him and waiting for Chu Jian, and the other forcing him to be a man and do it with Shengnen. 
Xu Fei is frustrated that this kind of thing is still too sudden for him. As Su Fei feels it is too sudden, Shen Yan doesn't understand what's sudden and sleeps. She goes to Zhen Bei's military camp and tells Xu Fei to sleep early. Xu Fei feels relieved, but at the same time, he's frustrated but calms his mind since he didn't cheat on Xu Jian. Shen Yan sleeps as soon as she lays down, and Xu Fei is annoyed to see this. Xu Fei holds the buckets, sleeps, and wakes up in the real world with buckets and feels proud that he will be rich now. The first brother enters the room asking about Xu Fei's disappearance last night, while Xu Fei is thinking about traveling between the worlds and bringing things while holding them when sleeping. Xu Fei apologizes to the first brother and then shows him buckets full of ambergris and blood ginseng, which makes the first brother wonder if Xu Fei stole them away from some Chinese medicine store. Xu Fei assures that it is legal. Xu Fei explains his plan to the first brother that his family does exports, so they are going to trade this and the second brother's family sells mountain herbs, so he's going to sell it for him and give him the lowest price. Xu Fei assures the first brother of the herbs being legally picked up as he inquired. The first brother trusts Xu Fei and demands some profit from him, and the second brother calls Xu Fei a loyal and caring friend. The first brother hails the second brother, who comes with the fourth brother, who manages discipline and would have called the police as the three brothers drank last night. But he warns the three brothers not to do so again. The first brother shows them buckets of herbs, which makes the second and fourth brothers wonder if Tu Fei robbed a Chinese medicine store as it's too much. The fourth brother advises the second brother not to trade in mountain goods as it's a loss for them. The fourth brother confirms the authenticity of the herbs. The first brother reminds the second brother of his family's mountain herbs business, which persuades him to agree. The fourth brother tells them with a stable supply of these, they can be rich and earn tens of millions in less than a year. But if the source of these is exposed, they will get nothing, and that's precisely why they called the second brother to discuss all this. The fourth brother feels his duty is done, but Xu Fei needs help in the subsequent sales process. The fourth brother tells Xu Fei that their friendship is purer than this, and he doesn't need a forced benefit. But Xu Fei doesn't mean that. He wanted someone to handle all this, Xu Fei tells the fourth brother that both his brothers are from wealthy families, and he doesn't want to get scammed. The fourth brother calls both brothers brainless. He tells Xu Fei not to worry, but Xu Fei insists he helps him as he doesn't want outsiders to seek extra profit in the market. It might tighten things up. The fourth brother agrees but only wants 0.5% monthly profit, while Xu Fei wants it to be at least 20%. The fourth brother disagrees, so Xu Fei accepts his stance. They all are going for dinner downstairs. Xu Fei's phone rings, and it's Chu Jinan asking Xu Fei's whereabouts and if he's okay as she was told that Xu Fei had gone missing while the brothers joke that Xu Fei might not be joining them for dinner. Chu Jinan is happy to see that Xu Fei is still keen on meeting her. And Chu Jinan tells him that after marriage, Xu Fei can't hide his secrets anymore, and they both blush. Chu Jinan wants to come and meet Xu Fei's roommates too and Xu Fei's brothers are listening to Chu Jian's voice more excitedly than Xu Fei himself. Xu Fei invites her to come to dinner downstairs with his fellows. Xu Fei's brothers are worried as they want to look cool in front of Chu Jian and book a hotel room for Xu Fei and Chu Jian. This forces Xu Fei to make them stop as they are over-exaggerating all while the fourth brother is as calm as ever and requests Xu Fei to lend him his perfume. Xu Fei tells all his brothers to come downstairs as Chu Jian has booked it for them, but both his brothers wear three-piece suits as they thought they would eat something expensive. Xu Fei tells them Chu Jian will eat anything with him, which annoys the brothers. All the boys in the dormitory are surprised to see Chu Jian there and some jealous ones even call Xu Fei a loser. Chu Jian comes with her best friend Li Jiaxu. Both of Xu Fei's brothers want to set her up, but the fourth brother tells them that she is not their match. This gutted them both and means that Xu Fei is a perfect match, but he lacks the opportunity to prove himself worthy. Chu Jian rushes and hugs Xu Fei, and thanks to his ginseng, her grandpa is okay now. Xu Fei greets Li Juaxu, but she rudely answers and even calls Xu Fei a coward. Chu Jian tells her friend to be quiet, but Xu Fei agrees with what Li Juaxu said. The second brother asks Xu Fei to introduce them to Chu Jian but she already knows all of them and even their names. The first is Zhao Chuanwu, the second is Yang Ming, and the fourth is Qian Shu, who is the second topper of the college. The fourth brother greets Li Jiaxu by calling her the third topper, 
which hits her ego, and she challenges Kim An Shu that he will not be the second topper soon. Still, he advises her to study one more year to reach his level, and that annoys both the first and second brothers as they think Jian Shu ruined their chance to set Li Jiaxu up. Meanwhile, Gao Yang is hooking up with two prostitutes in the club when a man comes up and runs towards Gao Yang, covered in sweat, and tells him the news of Chu Jian meeting the kid Exu Fei. Gao Yang can't believe that Chu Jian went to meet that loser Exu Fei again. Gao Yang tells his co-workers about his humiliation in the hospital because of Teju Fei. Gao Yang's fellow asks about their plan, and Gao Yang orders him to follow their exact strategy. While all the four brothers, Chu Jian and her friend are eating their food, laughing and enjoying their time. The second brother tells Chu Jian the funny habits of Exu Fei, which makes her laugh. The second brother requests Chu Jian to introduce him to any other seniors, which Chu Jian accepts, so the brothers warn Xu Fei to take care of Chu Jian, otherwise they will break their bond with him, which makes highly uncomfortable. Chu Fei thanks Chu Jian for liking him, but Chu Jian thanks God instead for making them meet each other, and they look adorable together. Suddenly, an old man enters the restaurant and points at Xu Fei for deceiving him, the officer. He tells him all the lies that he dug up a lot of ginseng from the mountains and planned to sell for a lot, but Xiao Fei came to him and deceived him. He took all the ginseng, ran away, and he could not catch him with his old legs and started crying. The old man continues further that it was for his ill wife to see the doctor, but today she died. The old man and the student council officer know the plan while following Gao Yang's plan to manipulate everyone there. All the students start to cuss at Xiao Fei for stealing someone's life-saving money, and even at Chu Jian for being blind and choosing a shameless robber. Wu Fei has had enough, and warns everyone not to say a word to Chu Jian, but to him only. The people start blaming Xiao Fei for false accusations, which makes the first brother angry and inquire if they all saw Xiao Fei stealing his ginseng. To stop spreading rumors like it's the facts, the second brother offers his credit card to the old man, but the fourth brother is sensible and asks the man to tell him the location as they want to see the cameras. Being a part of Gao Yang, the student council scolds him for teaming up against a migrant worker. Xu Fei questions whether the old man should have gone to the police. Instead, he went to the student council, but the student council officer says that it was merely to save the reputation of this institution. The other students start cussing Xu Fei and offer their support to the student council while the old man acts cunningly, remembering his dead wife. Chu Fei claims to have not met this man a single time. The student council officer tries to provoke a response and tells Xu Fei that he belongs to a poor family, so he would have stolen it. Xu Fei realizes that Gao Yang must have known that he could not tell the ginseng's origin to anybody, so he planned to use it in his plan. Xu Fei isn't worried and tells them to call the police. The student council officer manipulates the students to think that Xu Fei wants to defame the prestigious university and the other students agree and try to force Xu Fei out of the university. Meanwhile, the student council president Gao Yang himself arrives, the one who set it up for Xu Fei. The students call for Gao Yang to remove Xu Fei from the university. Gao Yang gives the old man his credit card with more than 200,000 yuans, and the old man praises him in return that he should have met Gao Yang earlier. Now Gao Yang addresses Xu Fei directly on the matter. Gao Yang cunningly calls out that he trusts Xu Fei to be a friend to Chu Jian, only to raise the crowd's reaction that Gao should not see with the eyes of the rich and deal with this matter properly. Gao Yang shows Xu Fei that he has only brought shame to Chu Jian and nothing else that disturbs Chu Jian. The director of the university arrives in a hurry, greets the old man, and assures the old man that Xu Fei's parents are being called for his act. Xu Fei doesn't find it acceptable that his parents are called, but the director doesn't pay heed. Xu Fei receives a call from his mother informing him of the situation she was told. Xu Fei assures her mom that it is all a misunderstanding that the university has taken wrong, while the old man shouts in the back that Xu Fei murdered his wife. As Xu Fei calms her mother down, Xu Jian grabs Xu Fei's phone and introduces herself as the girlfriend of Xu Fei and the heir of the Exua group. She tells his mom that the college has misunderstood the situation and that Xu Fei is fine with her. Chu Fei tells Chu Jian to calm down. The old man tries to manipulate everyone by convicting Chu Jian of using her power, and they all force <laughs> to accept his mistake. 
Gao Yang arrogantly says that Chu Jian will not do anything to defame the Xia group, but Chu Jinan is fed up and shouts at all of them to be quiet. Chu Jinan wants the matter to be adequately investigated, and the one who slandered Xu Fei before will face consequences. Chu Jian tells them that Xia family's legal advisory team will pursue the case. Chu Jinan requests Xu Fei to trust her. Chu Jian claps her hands, and Mr. Andrew and his legal advisory squad arrive. Mr. Andrew greets Chu Jian and assures Xu Fei that he's lucky to find Chu Jian. Chu Jian leaves the case to Mr. Andrew, who introduces himself as the attorney of the Grey Verdict and will deal with Mr. Xu Fei's slander. Everybody is taken aback to see the Grey Verdict here on behalf of the Xia group, and there is gossip all around that their salary is hundreds of dollars. All the people realize that Chu Jian is the Xia group's heir. The second brother proudly shouts that her senior sister Chu Jian buys lawyers worth hundreds of thousands of dollars an hour, so her boyfriend could steal the ginseng only 100,000. Gao Yang is frustrated and can't believe Chu Jian went too far for that loser, Kej Vei. Mr. Andrew sits on his chair and holds the old man accountable for his accusations of Xu Fei and inquires about where he plucked ginseng, as Mr. Andrew has all the old man's personal life information. According to him, the old man has neither a wife nor any occupation, nor even a channel to obtain such an expensive ginseng. This puzzles the old man while Mr. Andrew keeps investigating in an aggressive tone. The students wonder if the old man is a scammer. Mr. Andrew further warned the old man to be held accountable for his false slander and accusations if he can't confirm his verdict. The old man acts as if he's being harassed and tries to portray the situation as bullying. The police arrive and order the old man to come with them to blame the students wrongly. The old man falls to the knees of the student council officer Zhang Hai to save him from the police, who tries to push the old man away from him. The brothers of Xiao Fei enjoy all the happenings. The students start accusing Zhang Hai of being jealous of Chu Jian's friendship with Xiao Fei and that he should be held accountable for preparing an outsider to blame a student. Seeing all the fuss, Zhang Hai starts shouting at Xiao Fei that he has not told the origin of his ginseng. Chu Jian whispers in the ears of Gao Yang to stop making a mess of his own men here, or she will continue the interrogation and find who instructed Zhang Hai to do this. Gao Yang orders Zhang Hai to stop shouting while the department head apologizes to Xu Fei and Chu Jian. The old man and Zhang Hai are both to be punished by the police for working together to extort Xu Fei and are embarrassed in front of all. The police call out the students who are squeezed to make a statement. Mr. Andrew also wants to record their statements. Chu Jian then happily grabs Xu Fei's hands, thanks Mr. Andrew for all his efforts, and runs away with Xu Fei. The second brother wanted to follow Xu Fei, but the first brother stopped him from ruining their moment together, and they all had a little laugh at Xu Fei and Chu Jian's love. Chu Jian and Xu Fei stand together in a park where the sunset looks charming. Xu Fei thanks Chu Jian, but Chu Jian apologizes to Xu Fei as her mom initially said outrageous things to him. Secondly, because of family reasons, she and Gao Yang were forced to marry, but she doesn't like Gao Yang and only loves Xu Fei. She will never leave him, no matter what. She requests Xu Fei to never hate her for that. Xu Fei assures Chu Jian of his true love for her and asks Chu Jian to be together. And they both hug each other tight. Chu Jian requests Xu Fei to confess again at the girl's dormitory, but Xu Fei is confused and says she will keep rejecting him, even if he admits twice. Chu Fei tells her in that case he will confess again and again unless she agrees, and Chu Jian is happy. Xu Fei promised that he will never leave Chu Jian. When Su Fei returns home, his brothers imitate the scene between him and Chu Jian. They try to copy Xu Fei's dialogue where he says he will keep confessing until she agrees. Chu Fei tells them to stop, but his brothers laugh and comment on his excellent flirting skills. The fourth brother says he tried to stop them but couldn't. On the other hand, Li Jiaxu wants to know what's so special about Xu Fei. Chu Jian tells her he's better than all the men here. Chu Jian asks if Li Jiaxu has done an investigation on the matter. Li Jiaxu informs Chu Jian that Xu Fei has two buckets of ginseng with him, but he wants to do the medicinal business with them. Since Chu Jian's family has the most extensive channels, they both might work together, but Chu Jian denies it and guesses it could be his brother's. Li Jiaxu tells Chu Jian in that case, Xu Fei will not earn much of a profit, but with you, he can make more. Although Chu Jian is aware that Xu Fei has complete faith in his brothers, 
and won't engage in any business dealings with her. She devises a plan to purchase ginseng from him in secret to aid him in earning more profits. But Li Jiaxu doesn't like this plan. On the other hand, Xu Fei tells his brothers that he will sleep outside, as he doesn't want them to worry about his absence at night. Xu Fei requested his brothers to help him take a leave from the class if he could not come. The brothers laugh that Xu Fei might be going to sleep with Chu Jian, which makes He Xu Fei blush hard. While thinking of Sheng Nin, He Xu Fei buys red wine, white wine, and a beer and enters his room. He lays down on the bed holding the stuff he bought from the store to bring it to the other world for Sheng Nin. Old Fu repeatedly wakes him up as he returns to a different world. Chu Fei asks about the time casually, but Old Fu tells him that the Markham Mansion has gone crazy ever since he vanished. Marquis enters the room and asks Old Fu if he has found his fiancée. Old Fu points his finger at Xu Fei that he's here and whispers in the ears of Xu Su Fei that Marcus has never been late for the military training before. But today, she did not even go there as she was looking out for him. Marcus Sheng then orders Old Fu to make everyone stop looking for Xu Fei and leave them alone for a private talk. Xu Fei starts to seek an apology, but Sheng Nin interrupts and asks where he has been all this time. Chu Fei wants to know if Sheng Nin would believe he traveled to his original world. Sheng Nin breaks the table with his hand and says it's not possible. Chu Fei presents Sheng Nin the bottles of wine he brought, which makes her wonder if Chu Fei is really an outward person, and he agrees he is. Sheng Nin doubts Ex Chu Fei's presence here is a trick to fool her or to act as a spy from the enemy country, but Chu Fei denies it all and reminds her that it would be too late now to murder her even if he were a spy. Sheng Nin sighs as Xu Fei is not a spy, so she can marry him with an easy mind and assure Xu Fei that she will protect him at all costs. Xu Fei tries to say something about that husband stuff, but Sheng Nin gives her a stare and questions if Xu Fei wants to back out. Xu Fei is nervous and, in a confused way, tells Sheng Nin that he will marry her, so don't worry. Xu Fei doesn't want to cheat on Chu Jian, but he knows that he must live this way. Sheng Nin does not want to ask about Xu Fei's secrets as long as he does not do things that affect her and the Great Yan Kingdom. Xu Fei promises to be loyal and improve the Marquis of Zhenbei's house. Sheng Nin is pleased and wants to leave the Marquis' house in Xu Fei's hands. He wonders if she's afraid that he might cheat on her. Sheng Nin reminds him that they are both of one mind, so she trusts him, and if Xu Fei lies somehow, she will murder him even if he runs to the end of the earth. As Sheng Nin goes away, Xu Fei utters whether she's a heroine or a glutton for punishment. Old Fu asks if Xu Fei's all right as the Marcus was anxious when he went missing, and she did not even blame him. Old Fu tells Xu Fei that the city was nearly sealed off because the Marcus was desperate to find him, and now everyone in town knows the Marcus had lost her fiancé. Xu Fei gets a little emotional to hear it all. Old Fu tries to make Xu Fei realize that although the Marcus and Xu Fei have met recently, she trusts him greatly and he is already an essential part of her life. As Old Fu is speaking, Xu Fei walks away, making Old Fu feel like a trash can. On the other hand, Prince Zhao Zhen was furious that his spies could not determine who the Marcus fiancé was, but only brought his name. The spy tells Prince Zhao that someone suddenly appears, and Lai Ying from Qingqing Mountain's Easy Doest Martial Court is not her fiancé, as stated in reports. Prince Zhao gets angry at his spies and tells them he is right, as he knows they are unreliable. Prince Zhao knows that the celebration feast of the Marquis of Zhenbai is coming, so the prince will be there too. Prince Zhao ordered his minister to cut off the military pay of the Northern Zhenbai army. The minister informs Prince Zhao that the Marquis has earned a lot of merit and hasn't uttered a word about the withdrawal of military pay, and that the Zhenbai army would fall to Prince Zhao's feet when they would not have money to spend in the winter. Prince Zhao says he wouldn't have done anything like this if Marcus had married her, but she chose the difficulties herself. While eating lunch, Sheng Nin informs Hu Fei about the celebration feast, and he asks if he's coming there too. Sheng Nin tells him it is the celebration feast of the Zhenbei army, so he must go too. Hu Fei has never been to the palace and does not want to embarrass the Marquis with any act, but the Marquis assures him that no one will judge him there. Marquis requests Ex Hu Fei to open the wine bottle as she doesn't want to break it by squeezing. The wine's fine quality and crystal packing impresses Sheng Nin, but it's normal for Xu Fei and not worth much. As Sheng Nin is drunk, she opens up about the fact that she is worried about her army not having clothes to keep her body warm, making Xu Fei question her about the prize of the battle they won. 
Shannon tells Shu Fei that it robbed them of the reward, but also got their pay reduced, and then she becomes unconscious. Hu Fei laughs and utters that white wine is not so good to drink while Shengnan murmurs about being drunk. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see the next part, comment below.